I'm an ordinary guy, no exaggeration. I can wear the same clothes for several years, and it won't bother me. I don't need expensive restaurants or an apartment in the business center. A cozy home, a dog, and a devoted wife are all I need. It doesn't mean I'm poor. After high school, I didn't pursue further education. Instead, I started working at a factory. I quickly learned the trade, and it came easily to me. In my free time, I enjoy working on cars. I have many acquaintances who bring me their cars and pay me to get them in order. I have enough money, and I'm very economical, saving every dollar. You might be wondering what I'm saving for. I'll answer. For life, for my wife, and for the future family. And that makes me happy, knowing I can fully provide for my loved ones. I have a wife named Tracy. We dated for three years, and then decided to get married. Now, we've been married for two years. Most of my money goes towards supporting her. Every week, she goes out with her friends to the city and brings home bags of clothes. Tracy is a very extravagant girl. Unlike me, she went to college and is getting a financial education. She aspires to work in a bank in the future. Our acquaintance was spontaneous when I was still in high school. Tracy was dating a guy named Peter who, let's say, was a local troublemaker, constantly getting into some kind of mess. Peter came from a wealthy family, so they turned a blind eye to all his mistakes, because his father was quite influential in our town. After a year of their relationship, Peter cheated on Tracy and dumped her. She was in a very depressed state during that period, and almost no one supported her, except me, who came to help at the right moment. Frank, Thank you so much for being there. I don't know what would have happened to me if it weren't for you, she said. Eventually, our friendly communication quickly turned into a romantic one. She was my first experience, and I knew she had prior experience, but it didn't bother me at all. We spent a lot of time together. I gave her gifts, and ultimately, after three years, I decided to propose to her, and we became an official couple. My parents were very happy for me. My father constantly told me, The hardest part, son, is finding a real girl you can trust with everything, so be careful. Tracy liked my father, and he helped us with accommodation, so Tracy and I started living separately. I worked, and Tracy studied. Tracy turned out to be much more demanding than I thought. Therefore, I often had to take extra hours to ensure there were no downturns in our living standards. Tracy's demands didn't bother me. I understood that she was my woman, and I had to provide the best future for her so she wouldn't lack anything. Recently, a situation occurred when Tracy and I, along with friends, traveled to another state to relax and sunbathe on the beach. That evening, Tracy posted photos on Instagram in a bikini looking desirable. Comments like, you've changed, friend, and the pics are fire, were left by Peter. Tracy immediately showed me his reaction and said, what an idiot. Everywhere, his profile screamed, look how successful I am. Was I envious? More like no than yes. I didn't attach much importance to it. He wasn't interesting to me. Peter had changed a lot, but I doubt there were internal changes. I felt good because I was happy, and I didn't care. Tracy replied to Peter's comment with a thanks with a heart, and we didn't dwell on it anymore. A couple of days later, we returned to our cozy home. I went back to my usual work schedule, and Tracy continued her studies. Within a week, I noticed some strange changes in Tracy. She spent more time on her phone. And during intimate moments, it seemed like she wasn't fully present. Overall, Tracy showed signs that something was wrong. Sweetie, is something wrong? You look down, I asked. We've been together for a total of five years, and we've only traveled out of state once last week with friends. The rest of the time we spend at home, she replied. But we always go out to the city on weekends, I argued. Is that really entertainment? It has become routine. I'm tired of it. I want to go somewhere else. Okay, but you understand it won't be for long, because I work to provide a good future for us and our children. How much money is in our safe? She abruptly asked. 
About 80,000. Exactly. Can't we take some money and go somewhere for a couple of days? You're always working and you pay little attention to me. But Tracy, we've been taking a lot of money from our safe lately, and I'm saving it for our future. I see. After an unpleasant conversation, Tracy and I didn't talk for several days. She avoided me, and I realized something needed to change. After work, I bought flowers, searched for interesting places on the internet, and headed home. Returning home that evening, Tracy wasn't there, and she didn't answer my calls. An hour later, I received a message from her. Frank, I went to the city with friends. I'll be back late. After reading, I was puzzled about what was happening, why Tracy was behaving like this, and leaving home without warning me in advance. Tracy returned late at night, drunk. I hadn't slept during that time because I was sitting in the kitchen waiting for her. Where were you? My friends invited me to stroll around the city and then we went to a club to have some fun. Tracy smelled of expensive perfumes, seemingly mixed with men's scents. Did you buy new perfumes? Oh yes, I bought new perfumes, or rather, they were gifted to me. From her bag, she pulled out Halston for women perfumes or something like that. I'm not particularly knowledgeable about brands. Meaning someone gave them to you. Who? I don't know. Some guy. I couldn't refuse. Why didn't you ask for my permission, or at least call me? I was worried about you. The notifications on my phone were turned off and I completely forgot. I'm sorry if it upset you. Why didn't you ask me about anything? I'll ask for permission next time. No problem. And now, if you don't mind, I'll take a shower and go to sleep. I have classes tomorrow. Tracy went to the shower, and I stayed in the living room not understanding what had just happened. My wife came home late at night from the club smelling of alcohol and brought a gift that some man had given her. I decided to talk to her in the morning. In the morning, I got ready for work, but Tracy was still asleep. I tried to wake her up, but she said she felt unwell and wouldn't go anywhere. So I decided to make her breakfast, fried eggs and orange juice. I prepared her breakfast and left for work. Throughout the day, I didn't receive any messages from Tracy, causing tension because she usually texted me something during the day. Returning home in the evening, Tracy wasn't there again. This time I decided to call her, but it was also useless. So I sent her a couple of messages asking where she was. Tracy returned earlier than yesterday, and she was sober, which pleased me. I decided to inquire about where she had been and what had happened yesterday. The flowers I bought for Tracy yesterday had dried up because I forgot to put them in a vase, so I had to throw them away. Tracy justified herself by saying that she was upset with me yesterday and just wanted to have some fun. Today, she went out with friends again and wanted to share the wonderful news. We're going to Texas with my girlfriends this weekend to Schlitterbahn Water Park in New Braunfels for two days. We've already booked hotel rooms there and plan to spend the entire weekend. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I could have taken time off. You're working, and I'll be with my friends so I can have some fun without bothering you. Tracy, I thought we were going together. Are you saying you don't want me to come? I do, but what would you do there? We can plan something together afterward, okay? I agreed with her, but I was very upset. I couldn't understand what was happening, why Tracy was making decisions without involving me. This behavior infuriated me. We went to bed, and for a long time, I couldn't fall asleep. Suddenly, Tracy received a notification on her phone. Since the phone was locked, and I didn't know the password, I could only see the sender's name, Peter. Unable to check what he wrote to my wife in the middle of the night, I decided to unlock my own phone and check Peter's profile. On Peter's Instagram, there were stories from the previous day showing him partying at some club. At the same time, my wife was also at a club. Then I decided to check the likes, and as it turned out, Tracy had liked almost all of his photos. I didn't expect this twist. I didn't say anything to Tracy, silently went to bed, and knew I needed to get into her phone. The next morning, Tracy skipped classes again 
and decided to stay home. I behaved as usual and silently went to work. Throughout the day, I remained passive, contemplating what to do next. I decided to call my friend Jerry and told him about the whole situation. He said, bro, we need to go to the water park. Without much thought, I went to my boss and urgently requested time off, which he granted without any problems. Returning home in the evening, Tracy still wasn't there. I wasn't surprised. I was sure she was out somewhere driving with Peter. When Tracy returned home later than usual, she was once again drunk and paid zero attention to me. At that moment, I realized I had lost my wife completely. She no longer showed the care she used to. We went to bed, and the next day, before work, I prepared divorce papers. I wasn't going to tolerate all of this. The next day, Tracy was supposed to go to the water park. So when I returned home in the evening, Tracy was at home and had prepared dinner for me. We sat as usual, and she talked about her plans for tomorrow, asking me not to worry about anything. She also noticed my bad mood and asked what had happened. Actually, what happened? My wife is just cheating on me and doesn't try to hide it. I told her that I had work issues and would have busy days in the next couple of days. In the morning, Tracy was getting ready for the water park, took all her sexy lingerie, and asked how she looked. You're very beautiful, I replied, kissing her on the cheek. I had to leave home first because I had to maintain my alibi, supposedly heading to work. Jerry picked me up, and we sat in his car not far from home. He suggested going to the water park since the road wasn't fast, but I refused, arguing that Tracy might have deceived me, and she wouldn't go to any water park. An hour later, Tracy left the house and got into a taxi. We followed her. After 40 minutes, she arrived at a large, luxurious house with a BMW X5 parked nearby. There were about three people there, Tracy, one of her friends, and some guy I didn't know. Ten minutes later, Peter appeared at the gate, and they all got into the car and set off. After six hours, we arrived at the destination. We tried to drive carefully and not attract much attention to ourselves. We checked into the same hotel as their group, and Jerry and I took a room for two. It was already evening, and we didn't go anywhere. We just waited for the next day. We chose the most budget-friendly option, while Peter and Tracy booked separate cottages so we couldn't cross paths. The next day, we went to the water park. It was beautiful and extensive. The attractions were fed by natural spring water from the Como River. I lay on a sund, thinking about how great Tracy and I could have spent time there. Jerry and I wore big hats to avoid anyone recognizing us. We decided to occupy sunbeds in the center of the water park to have a broader view. An hour after we arrived, Jerry spotted a group of four people, including my wife Tracy, in a bikini, with her entire body visible. Next to her was Peter, who at some point smacked her on the backside. It angered me. I couldn't understand why Tracy wanted to rekindle her relationship with a guy who had cheated on her many years ago. It was a mystery to me. We watched as they applied sunscreen to each other, and at some point, they passionately kissed, all of which Jerry documented on his camera. It was nauseating to witness all of this. The group went to ride the slides, while Jerry and I stayed on the lounge chairs. That's when he asked me, What do we do next? The fact of infidelity is well documented. We can go back. I don't know. We can't just leave like that. So what do you suggest? And at that moment, a crazy idea popped into my head. Steal the key card. If they hadn't left it in the locker, it must be in their beach bag, which they left on the lounge chair. That meant we could approach and take it. You're out of your mind. We'll get caught, Jerry protested. To some extent, he was right, but technically, it was my wife Tracy's bag. If I took something from my wife's bag, would it be considered theft? With nothing to lose, I put on sunglasses and approached the bag, with Jerry covering me. There was a lot of useless stuff inside. At one point, I even wondered why she brought so much, but in the end, I found what I was looking for, the key card to their room. I quickly decided to take it, 
and Jerry and I headed to their room. They had a separate cottage, and we easily entered the premises, feeling like we were in a fairy tale. Everything looked insanely expensive, and on the balcony just steps away from the bed, there was a jacuzzi offering an impeccable view of the mountains. It was beautiful, but we couldn't stay there for long. We had to act quickly. I wanted to hang divorce papers from the ceiling, but then I realized that if I did that, Tracy would know that I had been in their room. So I decided to postpone that idea. We had to make sure Tracy and Peter didn't realize that someone had infiltrated. Otherwise, the cameras would quickly expose us. I decided to unscrew a couple of bolts from a chair. They might come in handy later. I also found Tracy and Peter's documents, went out to the balcony, and threw them towards the forest like a boomerang. If they found them, good for them. If not, it was their problem. Finally, we checked their fridge and found tomatoes. I took one tomato and decided to leave it under the bed. In a couple of days, the room would be filled with a horrible smell from that tomato. We left their room, and I felt like we hadn't done much, but we couldn't get caught. We returned to the water park, and to our relief, the bag was still in place. I just walked past it and put the key card back where I found it. Jerry and I spent some more time at the water park, took a few pictures, captured the moment when Tracy kissed Peter, and started to head home. In the parking lot, I saw Peter's car, approached it, and left a couple of nails right under the wheels. I hoped that when Peter started to drive, his tires would burst. At least that's what I hoped for. Because I hadn't turned on my phone yesterday and today, I received many notifications from Tracy, telling me how much she loved me, that she had arrived safely, and everything was fine with her. I simply replied with an OK, and Jerry and I headed home. Three days have passed since I returned home. Tracy was supposed to come back yesterday evening, but she still wasn't here. Tracy texted me, but not actively, mostly asking how I was and what she was doing there. During this time, I had already devised a strategy with my lawyer and prepared all the necessary documents. The photos also came in handy. When she returned home, I wasn't there. The first thing she saw at home was divorce papers and attached photos. I also left her a letter, stating that I had sent these photos to all her relatives and was willing to communicate and talk if she admitted her infidelity to me. She immediately tried to contact me and tearfully began to say, Frank, darling, what happened? That's not me in those photos. I hung up immediately and didn't bother listening to her nonsense. In the end, I decided to wait for another week. She also tried to contact her parents and mine, but they demanded explanations. She also began to lie to them, claiming that she was set up. She continued to stick to her story without realizing that it would only make things worse for her. After two and a half weeks, I needed to retrieve some things. I tried to talk to Tracy a couple of times, but she kept lying. So I had to come home in the middle of the night, and Tracy was at home, wide awake. I thought you were out partying at the club as you like. She immediately rushed to me and fell to her knees, saying, Darling, I don't know who told you this nonsense, but I truly haven't cheated on you. Let's talk. No, I firmly said, and left the house. It had been over a month, and Tracy still hadn't shown up for classes. She didn't even leave the house. I decided to visit her once again. She looked quite exhausted, hadn't eaten or drunk anything, lost a lot of weight, and even seemed to have age. Frank, I cheated on you. Forgive me. Not enough. I cheated on you at the water park. What about before the water park? Just friendly flirting. I promise you, there was nothing before the water park. You're lying. I want to hear the truth. If you don't tell me anything now, I won't come back here. She told me everything. It started with Peter leaving a comment and writing something in her direct messages. They began to communicate. The first time she cheated on me was that night when she came home late and drunk. It happened in Peter's car. And then she continued cheating on me with Peter every day until the water park. She justified it by claiming she didn't understand what she was doing, 
as if she lost herself and didn't realize her actions. This was because Peter began to take care of her, give her gifts, and she hoped for a future with him. She woke up at the moment when Peter took advantage of her friend, and his friend wanted to do the same to her. Her friend considered it a cool experience while Tracy almost threw up. She realized Peter hadn't changed, but he didn't want to let her go, thinking she stole his documents. On that day, he hit her and yelled at her very loudly. Tracy had to run away from the water park, and on her way home, she hoped I wouldn't find out, trying to forget it all like a terrible dream. But unfortunately, you can't escape fate. Six months later, we officially divorced. I felt that fate had already presented her with enough punishments. She tried to reconcile with me several times, but it didn't work. I had already firmly made up my mind. Tracy moved in with her parents and continued her studies at the college. It was a valuable experience. In the future, I'll be more careful in choosing a partner who won't be my opposite because I, myself, am an unassuming guy. This was a tough emotional trial. But I managed it, and that's what matters the most. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.